Hi guys. Um, one of the books I'd like to talk about this afternoon is uh, this one. It's called The Transparency of Evil, Essays on Extreme Phenomena by Jean Baudrillard. And uh, Jean Baudrillard was one of those uh, continental French thinkers um, who's probably more known as just a, a postmodernist here in the United States, and he's probably known as one of the more accessible postmodernist uh, thinkers, at least outside of the American Academy. And uh, this was my first time reading Baudrillard, and uh, I found some of the ideas a little bit surprising. Um, this is, I don't know if you um, recognize the, uh, the imprint of the book, but um, you can see up there it says Radical Thinkers, and the V is for, uh, for Verso. The sides look like this. Um, Verso puts out this whole series. I think they're probably well past 70 or 80 books now um, on all sorts of uh, philosophers, uh, mostly contemporary, that um, emphasize more radical um, strains in, say, Marxism, Freudianism, psychoanalysis, uh, feminism, um, politics, culture, things like that. And this is one of those volumes. Um, I mean, so so a lot of the the stuff in the series is sort of full of politically revolutionary and philosophically revolutionary ideas, um, and sometimes just overt Marxism. Um, neither of which Baudrillard embodies, actually. In fact, he explicitly identifies himself as a post-Marxist. So. I've mentioned on this channel a couple of times that sometimes I have problems with shorter pieces, uh, and not just in philosophy, but with fiction too. And this book can sometimes seems lo seem like it's a mile wide and an inch deep. It's only 200 pages, so it's pretty short, but there are 22 chapters in it. Although there are a few general ideas that he keeps hammering home again and again, um, for example, he's infatuated with scientific and especially medical metaphors to describe postmodern society. And he, uh, that he's always using um, ideas like AIDS, cancer, um, metastatic cancer, um, to sort of talk about how things grow in postmodern society as opposed to how they grew uh, before it. Uh, like I said, AIDS and cancer and computer viruses to pop up over and over again throughout the essays. He argues that instead of destroying organisms, these things just change the way that the organisms function. So uh, AIDS inhibits sexual behavior. Cancer is rooted in regular cellular division, except that it's gone radically metastatic, as I said before, etc. He also sees all areas of discourse, which had been previously been separated from one another, as now in postmodern society bleeding into one another uh, indiscriminately. Uh, the aesthetic has now become the trans aesthetic, and he has an essay called that. The economic has now become the trans economic, and he also has an essay called that too. So all formerly balkanized, separated categories have begun to sort of. Um, uh, emerge into one another as to, as to where you can't tell the differences between the two. I mentioned Baudrillard's post-Marxism earlier, and in fact he might even describe himself as post-political if given the opportunity, since he seems to think that even politics itself has come to an end. Applying his idea of uh, the simulacra, which is probably one of the if you know one idea of Baudrillard, it's, it's probably the idea of the simulacra, that everything is actually just the simulation of itself over and over again. Um, so he applies this idea of the simulation, the endless simulation, to the political sphere, and he says this, quote, But what can we do? This is the state of simulation, a state in which we are obliged to replay all scenarios precisely because they have already taken place whether actually or potentially. The state of utopia realized, of all utopias realized, wherein paradoxically we must continue to live as though they had not been. 
since they have, and since we no, can no longer, therefore, nourish the hope of realizing them, we can only hyper-realize them through interminable simulation. End quote. This almost reads like a sort of conservative critique or a sort of cynicism or nihilism almost, which kind of caught me off guard. I was thinking that he would have this, um, you know, considering the, the radical imprint and what I thought about him, that he would have some sort of political program to put forth. But he's just saying that everything that we can do is just a, a rerun of what we've already done. Some of the observations struck me as bizarre and wrong-headed, like what he has to say about AIDS. Quote, AIDS is not the reflection so much of an excess of sex or sexual pleasure as of sex's decompensation through its general spread into all areas of life, its venting through all the trivial variants of sexual incantation. The real loss of immunity concerns sex as a whole, with the disappearance of sexual difference and hints of sexuality per se. It is in this diffraction of the sexual reality principle at the fractal, micrological, and non-human level that the essential confusion of the epidemic takes hold. End quote. And that sounds interesting. I mean, the, the writing sort of has a as, as he uses the word uh, incantation, it has an incantatory power all of its own, as some of these postmodernists uh, can tend to be. But that's just false, right? I mean, when you say that the real loss of immunity concerns sex as a whole with the disappearance of sexual difference. So basically what he's saying is that AIDS is really the result of um, bleeding. Uh, there's also a, a he he mentions in here, like he said about um, bleeding together. Um, he also mentions genders bleeding together. That people can just get sex changes um, if they don't like being a man, they can become a woman, or vice versa. And he tends to be. He seems like he's saying that AIDS is one of the products of that. When AIDS is is really, um, you know, it. It has to do with the act of sex, not with gender sort of malleability or the ability to change your gender. Um, at least that's what I took from the quote. And I thought it was kind of silly and obviously false. Um, AIDS doesn't really know anything about the sexual reality principle. And I just thought that was a little bizarre, like I said. Sweeping statements like this one on AIDS occasionally... Uh, stud, but inevitably mar the power of any critical philosophy that Baudrillard is trying to offer up here, uh, if he wants to offer one at all. Uh, it makes for wonderfully audacious and exciting theory, but I think it makes for pretty shoddy philosophy. Maybe Baudrillard wouldn't draw such a definitive line between the two, but I think with the former... Meta metaphorical and analogical thought can help push theory along into sort of unknown realms and aid in the understanding of things in different ways. Philosophy, since it's more closely related to logic, has to be more careful. And Baudrillard is really working analogically when he's talking about AIDS there. He's saying that since X resembles A in some sense, and since Y resembles B, that therefore x is y, or x, uh, x is equivalent to y. And this opens up new vistas of understanding for theory, but as far as philosophy goes, it can do just as much to obscure as it can to clarify, unfortunately. These quibbles aside, uh, uh, this is probably one of the better introductions to Baudrillard's really large output of work. You don't have to be overly familiar with his work to walk away uh, having felt that you've actually learned something about what he thinks, uh, having read the essays. And for those getting their feet wet, this isn't full of the obfuscatory prose we're familiar with from other continental philosophy, like, say, Derrida's of grammatology or um, difference in repetition. And uh, for that, we can all be grateful. 
So if you're interested in Baudrillard, this is something to check out. The Transparency of Evil, Essays on Extreme Phenomena by Jean Baudrillard. 